Uh, as you heard earlier, my name is Stephanie Miller. I'm the Disability and Emergency Preparedness Equity Educator for the Arizona Statewide Independent Living Council, also known as AZ Silk. I'm going to talk to you about general emergency preparedness. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I want you, while I'm talking about all this, to think about the things that you use every day. Uh, and if you needed to stay in your home for a length of time, as they said, for 72 hours before emergency services can get to you, or if you have to leave your home right away, what kinds of things do you use every day that you'll need in those emergency supply kits? So uh, emergency preparedness to me is, is basically four things. Uh, be informed, make a plan, be ready to stay, and be ready to go. So being informed means you learn the hazards in your area. And as Cecilia just discussed, we have wildfire, we have extreme heat, we have flooding. Um, and you can sign up for emergency alerts, both with your local emergency management office or with the Red Cross. Um, contact your local or your tribal emergency management office. Follow them on social media if you have social media. Um, find out all the ways to get emergency information. So is it through, uh, going to be through an alert to your cell phone? Is it going to be on a website? That kind of thing. Uh, and have a, get, a way to get information even if the power is out. So if you have, you know, a battery powered AM FM radio, for instance. So make a plan means you're going to determine things like evacuation routes, not out, nope, not only out of your home, but out of your neighborhood, um, where you can go if you need to evacuate. So if the Red Cross has a shelter open or if there's a hotel in the area or if there's family or friends you can stay with, um, how you'll get transported to, to that sh either shelter location or to your family or friends. Um, and you also want to make sure you determine if there's a hotel that you can bring your pets to the hotel. Uh, build a strong support network. So talk to your family, your friends, your neighbors, your caregivers, if you have caregivers, um, and include them in your plan and make them a part of it. Uh, keep a paper list of phone numbers and emergency contacts. So you can keep that on your cell phone, but if your cell phone runs out of power, for some reason you don't have a charger, then all of that, you know, unless you memorized it all, you don't have that. So it's good to keep that written down and then have an out-of-state contact or somebody at least that's out of the area. So if the whole area is affected, you have somebody outside that can help you. And then most importantly, practice that plan. So be ready to stay means that you're going to have an emergency supply kit that will last you again for the first 72 hours. Act like the Calvary is not coming. Um, you want to have things in that kit uh, for at least three days, possibly without electricity or running water. And then here's a list. So you need a gallon of drinking water per person per day. So again, for at least three days, you need ready to eat canned foods and other non-perishable sources of food, manual can opener, uh, a crank solar or battery powered AM FM radio, flashlights, tools, batteries, a uh, first aid kit, uh, medications, remember your medications, uh, instant cold packs if you need to keep that medication cold, um, medical supplies if you've got syringes, test strips, oxygen tanks, uh, things like that, and then personal hygiene and sanitation items. So remember your supplies for children and pets and have those supplies in a waterproof container. Uh, an example would be you know, totes that you can stick them in just in case there's flooding in your home. Uh, check for emergency, check your emergency supply kit every six months and rotate your items out as needed. So be ready to go means that you're going to evacuate your home and you want to leave right away. If there's a wildfire coming towards your home, if you happen to live in an area that's near wildland, um, you want to be able to leave without searching around for everything you need. You want it all in, located in one place. And your, your go kit or your go bag, or some people call it a bug out bag, is a, just an extension of that 72 hour kit for you know your purposes for staying in your home. So here's another list of what you would need. And rather than some of these larger items, of course you want 
portable items. So you need bottles of water, lightweight, uh, ready to eat foods. You can put granola bars in there and things like that. Uh, remember personal hygiene items, change of clothes, shoes, coat, hat, uh, extra set of car and house keys, prescription and other medical supplies. So if you have canes, hearing aids, reading glasses, regular glasses, um, think about all those medical supplies. Think about the things that you use every day. And if you had to leave the house now, what would you need to take with you? Um, think about copies of important documents, put them in waterproof containers, you know, you can stick them in a Ziploc bag. Um, first aid kit, again, flashlights with extra batteries and battery powered devices. Um, eyeglasses and contact lens supplies, gloves, masks, whistles, matches, paper and pencil. The list goes on and on, but I, again, this is kind of a general overview and I just want you to think about the things that you would need if you use every day. So another way to think of it is the five Ps. So people and pets is the first one. Personal items, so your water, food, toiletries, change of clothes, prescriptions and other medical supplies, paper, uh, was, which would be the copies of important documents and then priceless items. So again, each person and pet needs a go bag um, and then use something that is easy to transport, such as a suitcase on wheels. You don't want a bag that's too heavy that you can't move very far. Put the bag in a place that's easily accessible and easy to remember. And that's very important because when you have to go in a split second, we know that sometimes we just like, our brains go into survival mode and we forget. And there was an instance at my house where there was something going on with the water heater and it could have led to a, a fire. And that made me think about where was my go bag and I forgot where I put my go bag. And it turns out it was in the garage, but I remembered where my dog's go bags were. And so, <laughs> so I ended up moving it to where theirs are so that I don't forget it. Uh, so again, you want to check your go bag every six months and rotate the items as needed. So uh, I'll leave the questions for a second, but um, you know, I wanted to let you know that of things that maybe you'd want to stay at home for and things that maybe you'd want to leave for. And so when the, you know, the, the pandemic, which, you know, obviously COVID is still here, but when it was at its highest point, we were told to stay in our homes, right? And don't go out unless you absolutely needed to get your supplies to last you for two weeks and stay in your home. Uh, another reason why you'd want to stay is if there is a, like a chemical spill and you're too close to, to that area for, you know, first responders to tell you to leave, they're going to tell you to shelter in place and stay in your home. Uh, reasons why you would want to leave would again be a wildfire. It could also be a chemical spill. If you're out far enough from the spill that you have time to leave, then emergency responders might tell people in another area, just go and evacuate your home. Um, and then of course, um, we, we heard about house fires. So that would be a reason that you want to get out right away and be able to take the things that you need with you. So that is all for me and I will hand it back over to you. All right, so do we have any questions from the audience for Cecilia or Stephanie? Yes. I always wondered how long to keep water in the water bottles and just is it good for garden water? The rule is um, to change, to check your, your supply kit every six months. So I'd say don't leave it in there any longer than six months. And then as far as garden water, I, I'm assuming that's just me, but I'm assuming it's still okay. You can use it for that purpose. Is the present well so um, one of the things that we are doing is videotaping today and so we will have those recordings on the Benavia website benavia.org just give us a little time afterwards to get those ready thank you what other questions do you have well I don't know about you but I feel better knowing that Stephanie and Cecilia are out there doing the work that they do every day so did you learn a few things in this first section yeah for sure did you have another question Where do you buy a syringe? Well, that's only if you if you need syringes and test strips and things like that. So um, that's you know specific to the person who would need it. That's just an example of a medical supply that you might need. Oh, 
Good question. Yeah. So that would be if you were normally using syringes, you probably have a supply and you just want to make sure that you have enough. I wanted to share with you, um, Stephanie mentioned a go bag, having a go bag, and also having a go bag for your documents. And these bags are available um, in two places out in your resource tables. They're at the Arizona Department of Emergency Management and Military Affairs. DEMA is here. They have these. And the Benavia table has these. So this is for your important documents. So you can put all your important documents in there, keep it in your safe. It's funny, I tried to bring one of these home and my husband said, well, our documents are in our safe. And I said, what are you gonna do? Pick up the 150 pound safe and walk it out the door? <laughs> so anyway, I think he's using it. Yes, ma'am. Where can one go to take the CPR course? Well, we have a couple of, we have Arizona Fire and Medical here today and I know that they have volunteers that teach that and American Red Cross does too, right, Cecilia? Yes. So we have um, we have the our training services offers ones where you can receive a certificate, and so that will have the first aid, the CPR, and you can kind of select which class you're wanting. If it is just going to be for adults, or if you'd like it to have like children, infants in there as well, um, that one will have a small cost. We also have a free version that we do, but that's a hands only CPR um, that. I and my volunteers and our disaster services will present to communities. Um, and so that one is bystander CPR. So it is doing the compressions without the rescue breaths. So it's a good basis to kind of have a good foundation. So that way you know how to um, properly administer those compressions to a person. Um, you know, if you needed to jump in until first responders arrive. It is great to get the certification, however, but just for that quick, easy, you know, quick and dirty information. We do have our, um, our presentation we do for hands only CPR. And I was told also that AARP also offers that. And Stephanie, did you have more? I actually had just another addition to what I was presenting on. Uh, I know I gave you a big long list and it seems like, how do we get all of these things, especially if you're on a limited income? And I just want you to know, just start where you're at. Look around your house right now, find some supplies that you have that are already there. There's a lot of supplies out here that you can make use of as well to put in your kits. So I know it's easy for me to stand up here and say, do all this stuff, but just start where you're at. Thank you. And one more time, will you help me thank Cecilia and Stephanie? And um, they will be here during the break, um, and the American Red Cross has a table, so please go ahead and visit them. Um, is Jessica Perry here? Jessica. Okay. Well, we're going to just have a little switch here. We're going to go ahead and take a break right now, and I'm going to invite you to go out and visit those tables that we talked about, which is in the next room. There's some light snacks in there. Please don't bring the snacks back in here. They want bottled water only. And we're going to come back right around 11 o'clock. So just about 15 minutes to visit those tables. Come back and hear from our next three speakers. Thanks so much.